Alrighty. So, what on earth am I doing today? Other than uh, playing with some crusty old radio equipment. Well, um, uh, this machine up here, this is a Kenwood TS440S uh, HF transceiver. And um, this is a, a machine that belongs to the Pine State Amateur Radio Club. And uh, I guess it was about a week ago, um, I was at the club's monthly breakfast and we got to talk about field day and they mentioned, um, or one of the guys mentioned that they had a new field day rig because they had just decommissioned one of their previous field day rigs um, because it had some issues. Um, and, uh, you know, I'm interested in fixing up and, and working on older equipment. Um, so I, I dug in a little bit and asked what it was, and um, I don't remember if they mentioned or if he mentioned for sure that it was a TS440. I knew he said it was an older Kenwood, um, which piqued my interest because um, the, I've kind of had my eyes out for an older um, uh, a TS430 or 440 for a while because they're really good machines. Um, they're very capable. Um, they're not so new that they're really difficult to work on, but they're also not so old that they're really annoying to work on. Um, and they're right in that area where they've got all sorts of just age-related issues, you know, failing caps. And they have some really famous issues where some of the glue that was used to hold down components in some vital areas, uh, as it ages, it turns conductive. Uh, and so there are a number of pretty common issues with them. And so... Um, I, I thought I might be able to take a crack at uh, repairing it. Um, and so I asked uh, the guy that was um, hanging on to it if I could uh, pick it up and try and work on it. And he said, sure. Uh, so thanks, Jerry. Um, and uh, so I picked it up and I fiddled with it a little bit. Um, and uh, it seems to receive okay, but it definitely has some issues. Um, and so what I'm going to do now is kind of show um, how I'm going to use this radio communication test set to, um, uh, well, you know, how you might diagnose some of these issues or at least kind of get a baseline for the status of the piece of equipment. Um, and this radio communication test set isn't really, um, you know, designed for equipment like this. Uh, but I don't know, maybe it is. I mean, it can run down to 400 kilohertz all the way up to a gig. Um, so it's it's very capable. Um, and it does AM modulation, which is perfect for a rig like this. And it's not really nice and easy to test with AM because, um, you know, it sends a continuous carrier. It's not like sideband where you have to input a tone. And um, I can just press the send button to put power into it. So um, what I'm going to do is step through all the bands. Um, so this one does 160 through 10 meters, you know, it's a standard HF uh, rig. Um, and I'm gonna test transmitting and receiving, um, and then I'm gonna use this uh, Marconi to, to quantify those results. Um, and so here we're in, um, we're in 160, and the Marconi is set to transmitter test, and if I press send, the on-air LED comes on, and you can see that uh, there's no AM modulation, which makes sense. I don't have a mic connected to it. There's no audio input. And it's getting about 8 watts. I can turn the dial up. You know, call it 10 watts. But if you see, if I go up above like 15, the VFD starts to flicker. Um, so something going on there. So let's dial it down. And what I can do is I can press this RX equals TX button stop transmitting and then I can switch this over to receiver test and then what this is doing is the Marconi is generating a one kilohertz um, signal at 50% modulation AM signal um, at minus 100 dBm uh, which is you know, very little power of course but you don't need much when you're directly wired in um, so receiving on um, you know, 160 seems to be fine. So we're going to switch back to transmitter test. And then I'm going to step up a band to 80 meters. And I'm going to do 
the same thing. I'm going to hit transmit. And you see here, the flickering has already started and the, the needles kind of wobble in a little bit and the power coming out is only a couple of milliwatts. But if I dial down the carrier, there we're getting about 10, 10 watts on, you know, it's, it's the frequency counter is working great. So we're getting about 10 watts out. And if I dial it up, 15 watts is usually about the threshold. So 14.9, it's fine. As soon as I go over that, see it's out, it's reading 20 watts, but at 20 watts, the TS440 is flashing like crazy. So let's pull this back down, stop transmitting, switch it over to receiver test. And you know, that's working just fine. So back to transmitter test, oops, up <clears throat> to seven meg. And do the same thing. So transmit. Um, I got to say, I am very impressed. Uh, okay, there we go. I'm very impressed with the, the frequency stability. <laughs> I don't know, maybe it's just both of these machines in their old age. They're just agreeing with each other. But this is on 7.260 megahertz and it's reading 7.26007 megahertz. So that's doing great. So there's uh, seven watts in, that's fine. You know, eight watts, nine watts, 10. And again, about 20, it's flickering pretty bad. And the power level is weeble wobbling all over the place. So, um, and then again, let's go over to receiver test. Whoops, stop transmitting. Yee. And again, the, and the audio that's coming out is coming out of the TS440. If I adjust the volume, I'm not sure how well that sound is making it in my lav mic. It's just a, a one kilohertz uh, sine wave at 50% AM modulation. Um, so back to transmit test, up to 10 megahertz. Let's test the same thing. Again, it's getting the frequency dead on. And four watts, five watts, eight watts, nine. And then again, above, pretty much as soon as you go above 15, it gets really flickery and the power outlet output drops significantly up to right up to 15 it seems to be working okay so i'm transmitting receiver test and it's receiving just fine at 10 meg let's go up to 14. Again, as soon as you get over 15 watts, the VFD starts buzzing on you. Um, this one, the transmit frequency is not at all. Ah, because it was getting overdriven. So at like 10 watts, it's fine. Or 11 watts, but if I go too high, so up to 15 watts, transmit frequency is way off what it should be. So that's pretty interesting. But if I drop the power back down, oops, wrong dial. Don't really care about the mic. If I drop the power back down, the frequency stabilizes again. And the receive works just fine there. Let's go up to 18 meg. Eight watts, 10 watts. So again, the same thing. If you go over 15 watts, it seems to be doing just fine at 10. So if I just leave it at 10, it's doing perfectly fine. Whoops, wrong button. And again, the receiver working just fine. Let's go up to 21 meg. And again, nine watts frequency counters 
that on. I raise the power. You, get, you know, same thing happens. Above 15 watts, it gets real flickery, and the transmitted frequency is super, super wobbly. Um, And that sounds fine. <clears throat> Go up to 24 meg. Where is 24 anyway? Oh, that's 12 meters. I don't do very much in the upper end of HF. Okay. Transmit. And watts. It's also nice that the the power meter on the radio, you know, when I dial it into about ten watts, it's almost right on. So that's it's so good. And then again, above that, it just gets all sorts of unhappy. The needle just goes bananas. Um, one thing, it's kind of out of frame, but I do have a a power meter in line with my power supply. And so right here, pulling ten watts, it's pulling six point three amps. And if I raise it just a smidgen to where it tips over, it goes up to 8 amps. So there's something just unhappy in the finals. Um, and it may be as simple as bad caps. I, I really don't know. Um, receiver test. That sounds good. Transmit test. These buttons are kind of stiff. And then last but not least, up to 10 meters. That's Ten watts is fine. And then yeah, as soon as you cross that 10, 15 watt threshold again. So all the bands are pretty consistent in that way. So that's good. Um, stop transmitting. Receiver test. All right. So it seems like on lower power modes uh or rather <clears throat> at call it 10 watts and less it's doing perfectly fine but yeah beyond that it's it's got some issues but all the bands are receiving just fine um and that matches what i found when i had it actually on the air on my antenna um, but it just does not want to transmit that much power. Um, so I think the next step now is, uh, I'm going to actually stop this video here and go ahead and upload it and get it out there and, uh, start doing some more research.